One of the most frustrating issues I had with this telescope was learning to focus it, even on something as close as a quarter of a million miles away. All of the jerkiness in this video clip is me trying to be gentle when I touch the focusing knob. I accidentally noticed a guy in a video talking about his focusing motor, and that led me to this one from Celestron. This is the Celestron focus motor and the pieces that come with it. Also included are some good instructions that we need to follow to get this installed right. I've heard some people have had problems when installing this focus motor and that it would bind up. I think most of those problems, if not all of them, come from little error during installation and we'll show you that. The focus motor isn't very light, so you need to pay attention to this and rebalance your telescope after you install it. The first thing we have to do is use the included wrench to set the drive collar to match the markings on the case. I'm not exactly sure what this really does, but they say it's necessary and it's easy, so I did it. This little grub screw is important in that it's one of the things that clamps the focus motor to the focusing shaft in the telescope. These two included mounting plates adapt the Celestron focus motor to different telescopes. The one on the left with the cutout is the one for my 6SE. Before you can start installing the focus motor, we have to get rid of this little cover on the focusing shaft. The instructions for this unit encourage us to use a screwdriver to help ease that cover off. Pushing something like this off of a shaft always works better than trying to pull it off. And this is the bare shaft that we're looking for for putting the focus motor on. Next we use a 2mm hex wrench to remove the factory trim plate. I always save stuff like this because you never know later on you might need a screw or something. Notice that this shaft assembly can move back and forth a little bit and it's important that we pay attention to this. We need to make sure that the shaft assembly remains centered in the trim plate when we put it on. Get it too much to one side or the other and that can cause the focus shaft to jam up. The hole pattern lets you install this plate in a bunch of different ways so you can aim the motor in different ways as you need for clearance. It's important to get all three of the screws started but loose. We want to be able to make sure that that shaft is centered in this plate before we start tightening things down. You should tighten each screw a little bit, go back and make sure that the shaft is centered and free, and go back and tighten them a little more. Repeat the process until you get it snug. When you get all three screws tight, go back and make sure that the focus shaft is still free and turns easily. You can install the focus motor in several different ways so you can make sure that you have the maximum amount of clearance for other equipment that you're using. I've gone back and moved mine twice after I found conflicts, and it's easy to do. This is the position I've settled on with my focus motor for the equipment I use. Make sure you look at your installation from all directions to make sure that you don't have any conflicts. You can calibrate and control the focus motor through the handheld control on the telescope. You can also control this focus motor through the free software that Celestron has available. And control turns out to be very important with this because it can focus fast or very, very slow, which we want most of the time. Rather than trying to stuff all the control stuff into this video, we're going to do a separate one that shows you the software, the hand controller, and a new way that I just came across for controlling this. So keep an eye on my YouTube channel because there's another video on this focuser coming soon.